Okay, just another war deep, warm welcome to all our Earth-loving listeners. Um, it's just another few minutes of your life on Earth where we can deeply connect to ourselves and the people around us and learn so much from us and really connect from our hearts, one heart to the other, which is really making this Earth experience so worthwhile. Um, sometimes we so deeply bought into that we are separate from, from each other, where we are actually so deeply connected, not just as people, but also we are so deeply connected to the animal kingdom, to plants, to the rocks on the earth. And um, if we can really transcend that knowing that we are connected, um, I hope we will get a little taste of that in this experience. I'm Ilse van Balen, and I am your host for another session of the Rewilding Experience. And today my guest is Antoinette Pinar, who really embodies this deep connection to Mother Earth and to plants and to animals. And for me, such a beautiful example of really transcending that separation and being one with all. So Antoinette, I really want to introduce you to the people and I want to ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself from where you came from as a, a person, not perhaps not so connected until where you are today and um, your whole life experience in a few minutes. The floor is over, over to you. Thank you, Ilza. 20 years ago, I arrived at Tierfontein, a farm between uh, Beaufort West and Aberdeen in the great Karoo, the land of space. And one can call it at the moment also semi-desert after a great drought we've been experiencing for the past eight years. I came here after a visit uh, to Mali where I contracted cerebral malaria. And when I visited my doctor, he asked me whether I had a will. <laughs> and that really made me think. Oh. And I realized I needed to get hold of someone who knows about the herbs, the felt herbs, the wild herbs, medicinal herbs that can heal. And because I come from the Karoo, I strongly believe that it's the Karoo herbs that will heal me uh, more than herbs that come from, say, Europe or America, not that our herbs are better, but I am the stardust and the minerals and everything that's in my blood comes from the Karoo. So one can understand that the Karoo had to heal me. When Johannes then uh, uh, said it's fine, he would teach me. And I still giggle today when I said, well, I, I, I'm going to learn for three months. <laughs> and Sorry, can I just interrupt later. you? Can you just tell us who is Wim Johannes? Wim Johannes Willemse is a hunter and a great, great herb lover, Karoo herb lover. And he's a Griqua. And in the Griqua tradition, the grandfather teaches the oldest grandson and as it would have um, to um, Johannes's luck he was the oldest grandson and Opa Hansi uh, took um, Johannes on as his apprentice and uh, taught him from the age of 11. He had to go to the felt with his Opa and his grandfather and everything his grandfather knew was taught by his grandfather. So it's a long line of tradition about the healing qualities of Karoo herbs. And what I found always so magnificent is that most of the remedies would come with a good story. The people in the Karoo are great storytellers. Mm -hmm. uh, so any remedy would have a lovely story, almost like Maria Treben all those years ago from Germany. Uh, the, what I love about her books is that she would tell you how this lady came to her and she was peeling pears to make some kind of jam and whilst making the jam, she helped the lady with herbs. So 
uh, the story is very important uh, when one uh, works with the medicinal uh, uh, properties of karoo, any herbs, not just karoo herbs. So when I came here 20 years ago as an actress uh, and a singer, I had to forget everything I knew. I had to empty my cup. And it was the most difficult thing. I stopped reading. I stopped listening to music. And I'll never forget the day I was sitting uh, on my little stoop, reading a book, and um, Johannes was watching The Man Mountain. And after a while, I asked him, what is one doing? And he said, I'm reading The Mountain, Jeffro. And since that day, I've been reading Mother Nature. And in reading her, the plains, the mountains, the stones, the rocks, where the memory of the earth is kept. So my inner landscape opened to Mother Earth. And I remembered my membership I received at birth. My membership to the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom, which is fully paid up the moment you are born. But you need to remember it. You don't just have it. You have to go into nature and surrender yourself and remember, grow that member and embrace your membership. Wow. Then the plants can talk to you. And then the animals can talk to you. And then you can go from being tame to being wild. Wow, that's beautiful. That's so and beautiful to see. Yeah. I think all our uh, diseases, our diseases, come from not going out to meet the sun, not going out to see the stars, not walking to a tree and holding it and feeling it that we've severed that umbilical cord that we are born with. So Mother Nature is helpless to change our inner landscape. And through the years, I've got a greyhound pack of 11 dogs. Mm -hmm. And I had great trouble in the beginning. I've always had pets. Uh, and when Johannes said a greyhound is not a pet, they must teach me about their instincts and in that way light not light the fire because that fire never died but strengthen the fire that i was born where all my instincts were still intact so they became my tuning forks i had many days of many tears when, when johannes was very strict when we went to the felt and i would talk to them and he would say let them be wild. And when they come around you, their aura of wildness will wash over you and you will remember your wildness. Yeah. And now 15 years into having a pack, I've really been transformed from being tame to feeling and seeing the man mountain and the woman mountain. And that took me into a process where you can imagine what it means to feed 11 dogs twice a day and uh, clean, they, uh, they have camps where they stay overnight. Uh, and my most brilliant ideas always come when I'm with my spade and my rake in the hand picking up dog droppings. <laughs> it's a great labor of love. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the extraordinary happens whilst busy with the ordinary. Mm -hmm. And mm. I would, we've got on the, uh, on Tia Fontaine, we've got the woman mountain on the one side and the man mountain on the other and a fountain in the middle. Oh, and wow. on, uh, on the other side of my little white house, we've got the plain. You can see the Swartberger, that's 230 kilometers from us. You can see from Tierfontein. So I started mixing 
ritual with my routine. Mm -hmm. About 18 months ago, I would uh, stand in front of the place where I prepare the dog's food and I would greet the woman mountain just silently, then greet the man mountain, then greet the plains. And then a sentence started forming. I would say to the woman mountain, here's my dedication, here's my gratitude, here is my love, and here is my heart. And after about six months, I could visibly see the moment I would speak this to the woman mountain, the fountain, the man mountain, and the plains, they would all give a step forward. It's, you can see a step away from the blue sky towards me to almost say, message received, thank you. We love you too. <laughs> wow, it's and such an embodied just, experience. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. And we all can do that. Living in a city, if you live in a flat having a balcony, there must be a tree you can see. You see the blue sky every day, even if the sky is not blue because of uh, uh, what is Basudel and no, because of gases and stuff. Uh, pollution. pollution, thank you. Mm -hmm. You can still imagine the blue sky behind it. We all see the sun and the moon. Give them your dedication, your gratitude, because we can see them for free. Exactly. We don't have to pay that membership. We pay with love. And dedication is every day waking up. Firstly, greeting yourself, saying, I started a ritual where I would light a candle and would say, hello, Antoinette, how are you today? And the days I would say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, then... <laughs> I say to myself, I'll go to the dog and you will feel better. So to make time to pitch up at yourself, with yourself, to remember the tree you are born with that's in your heart. Exactly, and, and be attention. present with that, to totally feel that and be present with what you get. Yeah. And that's every morning, before you drink your tea, pitch up. And often, when you become quiet and with great gratitude, you would find tears brimming on your mm. eyelids. And that's the way you water your tree. Mm. Not with tears of despair, but with tears of gratitude and wonderment. And, now and then the you go out come up for me. And now the tears are just coming up for me. It's so beautiful. You're watering your tree. <laughs> You're watering your tree. And the first thing when Johannes taught me, one of the first things was to light my candle every day and find my light, the light we all born with. You don't have to light your light. Your light can't go out. It's there. But sometimes it's very weak because we, we spend too much time in our heads thinking one thought over and over and over and over again until there's no thought left. Mm. And when you look into the flame, near the black part where you light it, the flame is almost bluish. Mm -hmm. On the top, it's almost ochre. But in the middle, there's a golden circle. Mm. So if you wake up every morning, and you look at your own light in the candle and then you greet yourself. And then you pitch up and you greet the sun and the tree and the blue sky. And one's inner landscape changes from dark and desolate, from tired and overworked and warm to a place where there's a beautiful pool of water, where there's a fountain. My, my inner landscape has a beautiful fountain and it's got a pool of water. It's got plants 
and the stone where I can rest, and the soft whisperings of Mother Nature, where she embraces me as her child. I'm her child. Yeah, and that's the experience that we signed up for when we come to this reality. And sometimes we are so into our heads and into technology and stuff that we really miss that deep connection that we actually came here for. You've just said it so beautifully. Uh, yeah. And that is how you, you can connect with uh, many people come to Tia Fontaine wanting to know what's their path wanting to know what's their purpose. Mm -hmm. And you are born with a path. And yeah. all you need today to do every day is to pitch up at your path. And there's a lovely Afrikaans word that says scoffle. Now, <laughs> scoffle in English would be, you would walk with a little instrument and just clear your path. Just put the stones a bit to the side so you don't bump your toe. Just clear it and clean it. And if you walk your path every day and you connect with a tree in your heart, you make the link to Mother Nature where everything in Mother Nature has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And one can only find your purpose by spending time with your mother. You don't have to think deep, think deep when you sit on a rock looking at the sky or sitting on the ground, looking at an ant. It's, what does Ian Folk know in, in, in English? It's the a simplicity. simplicity. Yeah. Wow. You don't have to have a degree to be able to know how to look at the sun. You don't have to be able to read and write to know how beautiful the moon is, to read the moon. <laughs> that's what and I that's thought gift. for. Sorry, for today is also it's about the simplicity of life, but in that there is so much richness, and sometimes we are confused about what rich means, and we strive for so many things, but actually that richness yeah. is in the simplicity of what we get from Mother Earth, and you are such an embodiment for me of that of so such a rich life. Um, but it's so simple. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And you see, in Mother Nature, we live in a world where there's not enough. Mm. There's not enough money, mm. there's not enough water, there's not enough beautiful clothes, there's not enough yachts, there's not enough houses. Mm. And in Mother Nature, there's always abundance. Exactly. There's always enough. Even now, after in our eight-year drought, you look at the bosses who become sticks. And uh, in the beginning, Om Johanna said to me, look at the bossy, Jeffrow, and grow like the bossy. <laughs> and now that it's so dry, I would go to the woman, I say, oh, how can I, I can't grow like this. And then he says, but look at the bossy. The bossy only at the moment grows in its roots. It looks dead on top. But the faith and the resilience of this bossy in the power of Mother Nature, who will bring it rain, is astounding. So now when you walk in the felt, you only grow in your roots. And you, you, you work on your own resilience that so often we are beaten to our knees and we try to fix it in our heads. Mm -hmm. And here in the Karoo, the land of space, I every day see how the bosses are on their knees. Some of them, when you go to them, you say, oh, okay, they are now really just a stick. But even in that, there's beauty. Even in, in the way that bossy gets up, doesn't matter what happens to you, you can always get up. Yeah, that's a big lesson. That's true. Um, can you tell us a bit more about how you choose herbs? And actually, how I see it now is that herbs has an energy, just like people has an energy. And the consciousness of the herbs actually picks up on your consciousness. And when you use that with so much 
awareness, the consciousness of the plant can really work specifically with your consciousness to change whatever is out of balance and bring it back to health again. Um, sometimes we don't really see that connection and that the plant is actually so wise to know what to do in your body. I don't know if I've got it right, but can you tell us a bit more on Absolutely. how you choose your um, herbs and yeah, how it actually works to bring healing? Our bodies know the pin code of every herb we take. It rejoices every, every sip you take. Your body goes, hurrah, hurrah, there's something in me that I know I don't. It's not a chemical thing that you have to decipher. And in the beginning, when, when Johanna started teaching me, he would say to me, okay, in three days time, we will be going to the felt. We only, we, we, we don't plant herbs. We only work with wild herbs who grow where uh, the great gardener has planted them. Natural. And he would say, natural. And not many, uh, uh, our energy, I, I'm often astounded that we don't realize how strong our energy is. So it's very important uh, how you are when you go to the bossy. So when Johannes would say, okay, in three, times, uh, in three days time we would go. And it's almost like preparing yourself to take communion. In the olden days here in the Karoo, people went in with horse carts and uh, donkey carts once every, every six months to go for communion. And a week before that, Everyone had to work on themselves. And as a child, I looked at my parents and I was amazed. I didn't understand it, but I, I sort of uh, understood something of it, that they were preparing themselves. And when I came here, when Johannes said to me, when we go, go when the bossy sees you. It's like receiving communion from you. So the bossy can share it's communion with you because it knows its healing properties. It knows exactly why it's there. And while you pick it, you thank it, your gratitude. Thank you. I'm going to, uh, we send away uh, herbs once a month and only me and um, Johannes pick. Uh, we are a bit over precious uh, <laughs> uh, of how we are when we, when we pick. And it's such, it's, it's really like going into a holy communion, going into the felt, being embraced and absorb like ink is absorbed on that. Remember that old paper we got when clut papier in Engels, uh, it soaks up the ink. Yeah. Now that is what happens to you when you're in mother nature. And while you're busy with a, with a plant, you also prune it. You don't just pick, you speak to it, you prune it. The dust boss, for instance, that one uses with clip crayer for balance in the body. Uh, it's got this beautiful, magnificent smell and you smell like it when you pick. And when you go home, you like a walking dust boss. Mm -hmm. You smell a fragrance that doesn't have words. It has permeated through you. And the wonderful thing about herbs, for instance, say you struggle with diabetes, you would take a, a medication that you would have to take for the rest of your life. It's almost as if the, uh, the medication tells your pancreas, don't you worry, go and sit on the sofa, I will do the work. When you take the herbs, which in this case is Roy Vergeet Wortel and Likwart Blare, those two herbs, tell your pancreas, you can't be sitting on the couch like this. I'm You've here to help you. Put on your shoe. You've <laughs> got a job. Put on your hat. Put on your shoes. Put on your dancing shoes. Let's go. And we always send a three month supply when we send herbs. You can't just take it for. Emphasize the healing because that is what we think oh, should happen every time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's something on my screen that just said your internet is unstable. You can still hear me, yes? Yeah, yeah, I can. It's all fine. Okay, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. So, uh, and also when we send people a recipe how to steep the herbs, you always, once you finish a, lit finish a liter, you take a three-day break for your body to uh, make it sum. One and one plus two, okay, that's still three. Okay, we've got to work on that. And, and then also, you have to believe in the process. It's difficult to believe in a pill. It's so hard. And uh, often when people say to me, I can't take this herb, these herbs, it tastes terrible. And I tell them, go home and bite the pill you've, you've been taking all this time. Bite it and chew it. And then you tell me again that herbs are too bitter. <laughs> <laughs> so um, your commitment to the process, your pitching up every morning at your herb, uh, one steeps it in glass, at your glass container, you take responsibility for the healing you will be talking about that diabetes for your diabetes mm -hmm. and you take responsibility one of the emotional reasons for diabetes is that one doesn't make enough time to get to your sweetness mm -hmm. now your sweetness can be needlework your sweetness sweetness can be garden work your sweetness can be looking at the mountain your sweetness can be knitting can be working with wood but because you're so busy, you don't get to it. So you get no sweetness. So you start taking other sweetness that your pancreas cannot facilitate. Right, yeah. So if you make time for your sweetness, even if your sweetness is to rub your loved one's feet, if one makes time for your sweetness, your pancreas will breathe deeply and relax. Beautiful. Yeah, it feels to me like if you use the herbs, it's actually getting to the root of what's not vibrating at the right frequency. And then it actually brings it back so that your body yeah. can naturally get into the resonance with what it needs instead of just suppressing the symptoms and keeping something going that's not um, yeah. real or true. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Because our bodies are so clever. Very clever. All our trauma uh, goes to our cellular level. I'll never forget when I came back from Mali where I contracted the cerebral malaria. After uh, I came home to South Africa, I had a near-death experience there, which was incredibly traumatic for me. And when Johannes immediately started giving me dust balls and clip crayon, was not just good for the kidneys, but also to bring balance in my body. And one night I had this awake dream where I saw my cell and uh, through to my nature, my cell would be a plowed piece of land. <laughs> I remember the land was so red. It was ready to be planted, but there were patches where there were deep dongas, deep holes. And I saw Daspos and Klipkreia holding two little wooden rakes that people use to rake ground uh, as a meditation, raking the ground level over that deep holes in my cells. So then I knew that one of the jobs that Daspos and Klipkrae do is to bring relief on cellular level. Wow. And another thing I, I just, uh, uh, to end off with, want to link with my a uh, traumatic experience. When I came back in South Africa, I was diabetic from the trauma. I started using herbs and I'm not diabetic. Wow. So often when we go through trauma, if you have yourself tested, you find yourself, there's a high count in your body that might be cancer. You might become a diabetic overnight. It's ways that the body is, almost a little dance your body does is to get onto four wheels again. Don't immediately start treating the diabetes. Don't, one can, uh, in that instance, immediately start taking Sutherlandia, the cancer bush, would help, which helps the immunity. Yeah. And together with that, the Daspos and Klipkraya for balance. And give your body three months to six months 
to find the balance before you go and get yourself a prescription. Exactly. Uh, I'm not anti-doctors, I'm not anti-medication. Uh, mm -hmm. I just feel, um, I have seen it here with uh, patients, um, the, the medication you might take for your pancreas impacts maybe heavily on your liver. Mm -hmm. And because our bodies uh, are so unique, I might take it and my liver, liver would be fine. Mm -hmm. Or all of a sudden you find your kidneys not, or your bladder, or your, you don't know, and you don't see the impact within three weeks. You feel the impact after two, three years, all of a sudden, you start itching all over. All of a sudden, your liver is not. So uh, after a trauma, even a trauma like an accident or a divorce or the death of, of a, a loved one, your yeah. immunity needs help. Yeah, and I love system. that. Exactly. And I love the idea that you said you dreamt about the um, herbs that your body needed. And I think we so lost yeah. contact with our own bodies that it's important to dream again and our bodies will tell us exactly what we need. And then we've got to listen and take That's action. How we from that. Yeah. And our bodies That's are exactly so clever and we know. lost that. Yeah. We must really get back to And that is why we need to go to bed at eight, eight thirty. That is why we need to get away from a screen from five o'clock. That is why, even if you don't sleep, even if you just lie in your bed, you need the deep, deep sleep so your spirit Connection. can communicate. Exactly. I'll yeah. never forget <laughs> when Johanna said when he started teaching me, you'll see many miracles, Jeffrey. And <laughs> after three years, after a hard day, I said to him, well, this has been three years now and I haven't seen any miracle. I was sort of, not cheeky, but I was very tired of it uh, and over fatigued. And when Johannes says, every morning you wake up, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. If the great spirit doesn't say to you, you can wake up. You carry on sleeping the deep sleep. And you will go home with a big H. Your miracle is your spirit waking you up every morning. Yeah. I know a lot of us, of us work with alarm clocks because we have to. But try it over a weekend or something where you have time. And mm -hmm. see how it feels when the great spirit whispers in your ear. Beautiful. That's lovely. Um, that's so lovely. I can speak for hours, but I still want to ask you about, you also bring people to your farm in Karua in South Africa. It's like a really um, beautiful place. There's not a lot of human imprint or traffic lights and all that. It's so really pure nature. Um, so you bring people there and then you love telling stories, sitting around the fire and tell stories. Can you tell us a bit about that? Stories are our way of understanding ourselves. Since the beginning of time, the old Greek tragedies and comedies and the way people explain uh, something like, uh, uh, what is a man's for Deister and now, a, a, a lunar eclipse. eclipse, how people would explain it, how in uh, gr the great uh, uh, Greek tragedy, for instance, Antigone, uh, where it is the, partly about how important it is to bury your dead with honor. Things that we know in our knowing gets like a puzzle. You have all the pieces and when, when you tell a story, as a storyteller and as the listener, one finds all your unique pieces to make the puzzle full and unique. The puzzle is our witness to life. The story is our witness. Exactly. And the story is the place, especially around a fire, where the golden thread, mm -hmm. since the beginning of time, like a silk worm that makes that beautiful soft silk, 
So a story binds you together and puts you in a cocoon so that when you come out of the cocoon, the story has brought about your transformation. And it's silly stories, it's not big stories. Exactly. It's how you had to run up a, a big rock because there was a dangerous animal behind you or the bull got loose and everyone ran up the windmill and stood there for a day and no one could get close to them to give them water or the day you almost you fell into the dipkhat. The dipkhat is a place where you put the sheep in to take the ticks off. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's usually humorous stories and then no. the mythical stories like the water snakes and the, mer, the water snake and the mermaids mm -hmm. and the comic is gaiji and the modern stories we've lost so much yeah. of the legend, the myths. Yeah. And one can lose yourself in a myth and believe in the water snake and believe in mermaids. Because mm. our imagination is the muscle of our soul, of our spirit. Yeah. And I think um, families lost a lot of that because they just sit in front of TV where children sometimes have so much to tell about just their daily experience and there's no one to listen to the story. And that's something that we really have to bring back so that we can learn to listen to each other and that creates that connection and not um, makes us feel separate. So people, especially if we want to listen to each other, we, we all have stories and we want to tell that stories and that's so important. Yeah, thank you. So and people can actually you, also, sorry. And even if you just, I'm thinking of people living in cities, if you look around, you are going to see an ant or a bird, or an ant carrying something that's 20 times bigger than itself. You have something to go home to and tell. It's not just the teacher said that, or my boss said that, or that's not telling a story, talking about someone else's hair, <laughs> or their silly shoes. A story is but it's about something you saw, or the way the clouds were. If you remember your membership, and it's a free membership. You have every day you have a story to tell about something you've seen in Mother Nature. Beautiful. Yeah, that's lovely. Um, I just want to tell something about my daughter. When she was late in high school, she went through a very difficult time. She lost her father when she was 10 years old. And um, she was very depressed. And then um, I found Antoinette and asked if she had something to help. And Antoinette was very generous and she said my life could come and live with her on the farm for 10 days. And she lived in this little house and I think she had baths in a sink bath. Um, Antoinette called her a bit and took her to the neighbor's farm for a shower every now and again. But really to live just so <laughs> close to earth and walk in the, and what she said, what she loved the most was walking in the field and picking the herbs. And she's actually a beautiful artist and she loves making um, paintings of um, the herbs. So that time, I think she yeah. didn't at the time realize what it did to her soul, but it really helped her to open up. And now she's a very creative um, interior architect, but she also has this deep love for nature and for um, healthy stuff. And she actually is working on a project where she wants to recycle plastic and make compost bins, beautiful compost bins for people's kitchens. So that is um, yeah. really, I think, that deep connection that she made with, with the earth and walking to the fountain with Um Johannes and picking herbs with you really opened her up to this really beautiful earth and the connection that we have to make to earth while we are here on earth in this experience. So yeah, I just want yeah. to thank you so much. It was um, really beautiful to see her transformation from um, being in the cocoon and now starting to spread her wings in beautiful ways. Okay, then when I also the want to- time was at night. Yeah, and I think yeah. on, a, on a deeper level, you saw that. I don't think you take, or do you take people in in that way or not so many times? 
I know you've got um, the farm usually, next door. Um, uh, we usually people come for the, 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 uh, between five to seven days. We do the workshops. We call them workshops, but it's it's just for the lack of another word. Some people just want to sit. Some people want to talk. Some people want to knit. Some people want to paint. Some people want to walk in the felt. Some people don't want to speak. Mm -hmm. And what was for me wonderful to witness in Malay was how Mother Nature tuned her. I could see, I uh, often feel in myself, I have strings inside. And when I'm out of tune, I'm uneasy. And I could see the balance that the man mountain, the woman mountain, and the fountain has at the play uh, uh, on, on Tierfontein, tuning her without me and Um Johannes having to say a word. In fact, okay. we didn't talk a lot because there, there's no, it, it has to be experienced. Mm -hmm. And at Tierfontein, you have this plane of 230 kilometers in front of you where you can, when you feel like it, run away until you. Uh, out of breath for 200 kilometers or you can hide in the arms of the two mountains when you feel I just want to hide just hold me. <laughs> and she embraced that of Tierfontein the mountains yeah. held her Beautiful. and the fountain fed her and the plains on the days when she felt I just want to run away she could just run <laughs> not, uh, not with legs but in the head yeah Inspired. Yeah, beautiful and I think that pure pureness of being so deeply in nature and connected without other distractions is just so helpful for that deep healing of nature of yeah. mother earth to do that so it's lovely that there are people places that we can still do that okay then I also yeah. just we're running out of time now but I can just go on and on um, you've written two books. Um, if you just want to quickly tell us, of, oh, I don't even know, there might be even more. Um, just tell us a bit about the books. And then also um, the last question is about COVID. If you've got any natural remedy that people can use if they um, did could um, get COVID and how they can heal naturally from that. Yeah, yeah. I'm... Uh very lucky to say that my third book has just been published. Oh, I'm wow. uh, having the uh, 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 and, and Engels. The launch. Uh, <laughs> the launch this coming Saturday. Oh, wow. uh, the first book was uh, called uh, uh, The Greek Was Apprentice in English and Kreiki uh, Roermain Afrikaans we, which there was a need uh, me and Um Johannes travelled quite a lot, and then it became clear to us that we need to stay on the farm more. But we wanted the, the information to get out. So, so the first book is about the herbs that we work with, and uh, just generally what one could use in certain instances when one doesn't feel so well. The second book, The Long Months on the Skardavir, I used all the uh, uh, rice, the riddle that Um Johannes used to ask me when I just arrived here and my head was turning, I couldn't even remember my own name. Um Johannes would ask me, old oh, Griqua, Griqua riddles. And that took me completely out of my head and just into thinking like a gymnast, thinking all over. And in the second book, I uh, also shared a few uh, house remedies one could use for certain uh, ailments. And the third book called Antoinette Se is a selection of short stories. Oh, beautiful. Uh, the stories that has happened on our birth. Uh, and just in general, stories to soothe the heart. Beautiful. And, and you did ask me about the, the herbs one could um, uh, take uh, in protecting yourself uh, against the virus and also to help yourself after you've contracted uh, COVID is firstly, uh, uh, Um Johannes is just sitting down, my mentor behind me on the chair, 
Welcome on Johannes. <laughs> Firstly is your Sutherlandia, your cancer bush, your for your immune system. And secondly is your Wilde Als, your Artemisia Afra, uh, that that uh, helps with uh, uh, lung, what is lung gesundheit now in English, the, the health of your lungs. Uh, for instance, uh, if one gets a cold and your cold quickly goes to bronchitis, uh, that's also the herb, your Artemisia Afra that you take. And it's very, very important, the dosage. You wouldn't go to the shop and drink a whole bottle of cough syrup because you have a cough. Uh, then you have another problem. So you can't just put hands and hands and boil the herbs. It's important how you steep it. So you would take only a teaspoon uh, Kanker uh, Sutherlandia and a teaspoon Artemisia Afra on a liter of boiling water. And you would let it cool down. And once it has cooled down, you would take no more than half a cup, three times a day. Okay. And one would take it... Uh, uh, for seven days, leave it for three days, take it for seven days, leave it for three days. It's a sort of a sustenance, uh, con uh, concoction sounds terrible, a mixture, a sustenance mixture for um, uh, the health of your lungs and your immune system. And very, very importantly, uh, our lungs are our wings. And it's important to banish fear about the virus yes. from our being. Yeah. Take your herbs, do the things they ask you to do. But the moment one becomes afraid, your lungs, your wings suffer. And you'll find many people in, uh, in uh, a jail. What is a more beautiful name for a jail? Uh, in jails. Um, get uh, uh, TB or asthma because your rib cage, the rib cage then becomes the, the tralis, the, the, uh, as if you are in jail, yeah, the prison behind bars. Yeah. The prison is the word, people in <laughs> prison really suffer with uh, uh, TB and, and lung diseases mm -hmm. because their wings are imprisoned. So don't imprison your uh, wings and your lungs with fear about what's going to happen, how long is it going to be? There's, uh, those are questions. It's nonsensical questions. Yeah. Pitch up, take your herbs, and banish fear from your being. Yeah, and, and put down mainstream media and all the fear that they um, put out on yeah, the radio. Don't have to the feed on the fear. Yeah, just put uh, it off and go into nature and heal yourself. That's that's so true. And it yeah. comes with what um, Johanna said to me, I'm going to say this in Afrikaans first. Jy moet jou gloe voor jou bang sit. <laughs> you need Beautiful. to put, now, gloe is not faith. Uh, faith is something you can do in a chair. Gloe in this instance is a verb. It's an active thing you do. And mm. you need to put it actively in front of your fear. That's so true. Wow, that was so wonderful. And I know for those of you that live in South Africa, Antoinette also has a program on Radio Sonder Grense. I think it's now on Tuesday mornings. Um, it's changed I, again now. It's on Friday mornings at 9.30. Uh, okay, Friday I talk morning. about every, everything and anything I can think about. Okay, so <laughs> it's a good listen Friday mornings at what? 10.30? 10, 9.30. 9.30, yeah. yeah. Uh, to listen and get more of this deep wisdom coming from the Karua and a full embodied person that really dedicated her li life to become the wild woman that she is within and to also share that with the world. It was so lovely to have you on this interview. And those of you that want to connect with Antoinette, um, just below this video, these um all her, she's on Facebook. You can read some of her beautiful stories on Facebook. She's got a YouTube channel where you can get a lot of advice and healing advice. And then she's also got a beautiful website. And then the three books where you can learn more from her and when you're honest. 
Um, so there's so much more that you can get. This is just a little taster. And uh, it was lovely. I really enjoyed it so much. Thank you so much, Antony. Thank you. I don't know if you've got a last word. It's my first time ever I've done anything like this on Zoom. I've never spoken into a little green light and with you sitting on the other side. So I'm very, very proud of the two of us who was not afraid Pulling to do off. this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of, of just, just pitching up and just doing it. Yeah. And uh, for me, uh, the ritual of lighting your candle, of pitching up every morning, mixing your ritual with your routine, with gratitude, with dedication, with your heart and with your love. You can go anywhere, wherever you are and find a peace of quiet where you can find peace. Thank you. That's a very good note to end off. Thank you so much.